So when I build the program counter, I'm going to lay it out physically the same way it is in, in this diagram. I'm going to put it uh, just above the A register. So I'm going to take a, my A register. This is the A register, of course, the ALU and the B register. So I'm going to take another breadboard um, and connect it here above the A register. So take off that strip and connect these here like that. And just above the A register, I'll build our program counter. So we'll start with the 74LS161, which is our 4-bit counter. And then we also have the 74LS245, which were, is, is our tri-state buffers. And so you see that's the same, same chip we're using for the A register, for the ALU, and the B register. Um, so very similar uh, approach to connecting to the bus there. I'll start by hooking up the power for each of these chips. I'll start with the count enable. That's uh, pretty straightforward because the 74LS161 has these enable signals, or these, en yeah, these enable pins. So I'll connect uh, pins 7 and 10 together, and that'll serve as our enable input. And so this will serve as our, as our counter enable signal, which I'll tie to high for now, just so that it's enabled. And so next, I'll hook up the outputs of the 74LS161, which are pins 11 through 14. And those outputs, we want to go through the 74LS245. So that connects the outputs of the 74LS161 counter to our uh, tri-state buffers. So it's connecting it to pins 11 through 14 here. And so uh, that allows us to, to implement our program counter out signal, our, our counter out signal here. Uh, which controls whether the contents of the counter are going out on the bus. And to do that, we, we use our enable signal here. So this enable uh, basically is our program counter out, so pin 19. So if I hook pin 19 up here, that's our, that's our counter out signal. And I'll tie that high. Uh, this is an inverted signal. So that that's now currently disabled. And of course, we can also, you know, each of these, each of these uh, pairs of pins, you know, uh, this, this buffer from, from 11 to 9, there's also a buffer from 9 to 11. We can set the direction of this, of this chip using pin 1. So in this case, because uh, we're connecting the, the counter chip, the, the 161, to the, to the top side here, the bottom side is the side we'll be connecting to the bus. And so for, for output, we're going to be going in the, the down direction here, so from, uh, from B to A. And so from B to A, we want our direction input to be low. So we want pin 1 to be low. So I'll just go ahead and tie that low uh, by just connecting pin 1 to, to ground like this. And of course, we definitely want to be able to see what's going on in, in, in here. So you can never have too many LEDs. Uh, so we'll hook some LEDs up to, to this so we can see the, the contents of the program counter uh, whenever we want. Uh, and so this is going to be uh, looking at the you know, this is, this is basically tied right to the, the output of the 74LS161. We'll be able to see um, what those four bits are. So at this point, if I connect it to power, it should do something. And, well, it starts at all zeros. Uh, let me try connecting a clock to it. So let me connect the power for my clock. There's the, the clock circuit. I'll just connect the power here. And then the clock itself goes into uh, pin 2 on the 74LS161. So if I connect the clock to pin 2, it looks like we're counting. So we've got a counter. That's great. And so if we take our counter enable and we take that low, the counter stops counting. So our clock is still going, but the counter has stopped. And then if we bring that high, the counter counts again. If we go low, it stops. And so we can control whether the counter is actually counting. So that seems to be working. So let's try the, the counter out. So this is what takes the contents of the counter and puts it out on the bus. So the bus is going to be connected down here on the bottom side of the, the 74LS245. So let's connect a couple LEDs up just to see what this is outputting. And right now it's disabled, so it shouldn't be outputting anything. And it looks like that is the case. I'll just connect these four LEDs. Um, but if we take our counter output enable 
and we bring that low, we see that the contents of the counter are being put out on the bus. And if we take our counter output enable um, and take it high, then it's no longer putting that out on the bus. So it looks like the counter out is, is working and the counter enable uh, are both working. So the only piece we have left is the jump. And the jump uh, basically is a program counter in, so it should take the contents of the bus and load it into the program counter. And this should be pretty straightforward as well because the 74LS161, one of the reasons we, we chose to use it, is it has these data inputs. So it has this ABCD input and it has a load signal over here. So the load signal is gonna be our jump. So I can just connect over here. This is the, that load pin. That's our, that's our jump signal. And it's an inverted input. You can see it's got the little bubble there. Uh, so normally it would be high. So we'll tie it high. And then if we wanted to load a value in, we'd bring it low. So if I turn off the counter enable and just leave it there, then if I bring my, my jump, if I take that low, that'll activate the jump and it should load whatever's coming in here. Of course, these aren't connected, so they default to high. And it looks like it's just loading, it's loading that, you know, that, that, that default of, of high for those four, those four inputs that aren't connected. So it looks like that jump is working, or maybe. So really what we just need to do is connect these, these four inputs for, for that jump over to our bus. And so I'll just connect them over to uh, the outputs of the 74LS245, which are also just going to be connected to the bus. So they're the outputs of the 74LS245, but they're also connected to the inputs of the 74LS161. So I think that pretty much does it for the program counter, though. I think there's, there's one more thing I'll do, which is, uh, you know, because this is a, obviously an 8-bit bus, and we're only using four bits, you know, the, the, least, the four least significant bits for the program counter, We've got these, these other four bits that you know, it doesn't really matter what they are when we're outputting, um, but I think it'd be nice just to tie them all to, to ground. Uh, so I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna do that. So I'm just gonna connect these top four bits all to ground. And so now when we're outputting our, our program counter, whatever it is, if we enable the counting, uh, when we, we output this program counter, you know, of course, we're outputting the lower four bits, but then these upper four bits will we'll be outputting zeros rather than, uh, you know, probably ones or something else. It doesn't really matter, but, but it, it's nice to have those tied to ground. And I think that should do it for the program counter.